Something very interesting happened this week. Essentially, DG Core Read or Digital Core Read announced that they are and have been included in the FTSE EPRA NARIT Developed Index. So what's the big deal, ladies and gentlemen? Now, in my Business Times interview uh, a couple of months ago, I mentioned that data center reads are actually poised for a big bounce, you know, once essentially the play into AI actually gets subsumed within the sector. Now, definitely digital core is not one of the data center read that falls within this category. So in today's video, let's analyze why and also what's the big deal of being in the FTSE uh, FEPRA NARIC Index, particularly when Digital Core have actually had severe lapses in terms of public disclosure to minority shareholders. So as usual, enjoy this week's video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and spread our message of protecting your wealth in Real Estate Investment Trust to all your friends and family members. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, look at my Business Times interview uh, where I've said that data center reads are actually poised for a play into AI, that is artificial intelligence. And indeed, you can see the hyperscaler operators like Google, Microsoft, as well as basically Amazon has done very well. Now, in that instance, Facebook and Meta you know, falls into this category. But I've also emphasized that actually very little of our data center place that is actually digital core uh, or capital DC or even in Sanders Street falls or are actually benefiting from the magnitude of the hyperscalers expansion. Now, now back to the digital core announcement this week where they say that, just look at the announcement, they say that inclusion in a widely uh, recognize FTSE EPRA NARIT Development Index a significant milestone that will guide their trading liquidity. Yeah, for sure, because their trading liquidity has been whacked from the severe um, <clears throat> uh, inability to manage quite well on the REIT, uh, as well as visibility to global institutional investors while attracting new capital inflows from global index funds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to warn here that essentially this is what they hope for. This doesn't necessarily mean that they will get it because, you see, the attracting new capital flows from global index funds. Now, global index funds are one of the smartest people, you know, and we know them because they actually attend our GCP global investment classes, you know, be it family offices, very high net worth individual, as well as actually with funds. Essentially, they would not be able to actually categorize in you know, a digital core because of a lot of other uh, missteps you know, along the way, especially when it comes to protection of minority shareholders' rights, which we'll delve into in the second half of this video, as well as actually uh, the poor underperformance that they have been actually uh, doing since its IPO. Now, let's finish a statement, and this statement came from the John Stewart, the CEO of digital core. In the second part, he says that as one of the two pure play data center reads in the FTSE EPRA NARI developed Asia market index, we are pleased to offer investors the opportunity to participate in the long term secular growth of dry drivers benefiting from the communications infrastructure industry. Well, you know, how long is long? You know, it's one of the key things you want to ask. And my you, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the EPRA index, you know, it is actually a widely recognized index consisting of more than 300 over stocks. So digital core out of 300 over stocks will not be able to stand up, even though it's one of the two so-called pure play data center. Now, what's the big deal? Because if they don't deliver on the DPU, that is on the growth aspects of the lead, manages the smart uh, global index fund managers that they are willing to attract and wishing to attract may not even come at all, or not even smell it. Okay, now so even you know if they actually will look with it now, look further. You know this is the component index that makes up the EPR. Right? You notice that there are actually already twenty three uh, Singapore rates within the index. That's a like two thirds of the industry. So really, it's not an exclusive club that the REIT wishes to actually. Uh, give you the impression on you know or if you have the impression it was in in in, 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 
impressive club to be belonging to for Reeds, then don't, you know, because if you look no further than just the last inclusion of various uh, Reeds, for example, like Ames, ESR, and a few others, you know, in the last inclusion, you notice that essentially the stocks since inclusion have actually not done well. Unfortunately, they were battered by higher interest rates, you may argue, but essentially it does not automatically mean that inclusion in the index means out performance. Look no further, ladies and gentlemen, you know, at the chart, you know, for this is the share price chart of digital core since it's IPO at 88 cents. It went up to 125 in our previous videos we have actually won a few and many times that one digital core is time to take profit 120 and above. Two, it is actually as the name suggests, digital core, but it should not be a core holding within your REITs portfolio. And three, you notice that there were actually misleading as well as actually mislaps as uh, mis mislaps in terms of the communication uh, of the bankruptcy of their key customer, that is Sangat, as well as actually Sistera last year, as well as the beginning of this year, which we have documented in our previous YouTube video. Please look at them. You notice that essentially when the share price has crashed, you know, like 68% from 125 to 40 cents. Now this nascent recovery that you're seeing now, well, to me it's a no-no, but to you, you know, if you are looking for establishing a position, do actually analyze and think through first what we are trying to communicate because we're helping you think through the key points you know uh, and generally the global index fund managers that they are trying to actually attract in the EPRA index generally don't like missteps in terms of it's actually global communication to shareholders this is imperative for example you know in their March uh, statement they came out with a statement saying that hey they were not exposed to the likes of Silicon Valley Bank that went collapsed. But then, what's more important is that one of their key customers, that's Sustera, which we have documented in our previous video, we'll look at them, you know, which constitute 23% of their revenue and profits, were filing for Chapter 11 of bankruptcy, and they failed to even disclose this. You know, what they actually think was more important was to defend the position, by telling you that, hey, you know, they're not exposed to Silicon Valley Bank. You can see this chart, ladies and gentlemen, you know, so don't be surprised, you know, for example, like one of the reads that essentially we have been warning you all along for the last five years was Mental Life, you know. Even in the latest uh, re uh, valuation, they say that the manager was surprised by deep decline in value. Wow. If they have been following the sector as what we do as your manager, would you have been surprised? Think about it. The other thing, ladies and gentlemen, we want to bring to your attention is this, you know, um, in their latest report by Digital Core, you know, now they actually put a new spin of the meaning of stable. Now look at their headline. You know, in page uh, slide 10 of their presentation, they say that it's stable earnings profile. Look further down, you know, you see that the net profit attributable to shareholders crash by 48.7% from 17.6 million down to 9 million. So ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you, when your net profit has crashed by 48%, does this mean that the earnings profile is stable? What is the meaning of stable? Please ladies and gentlemen, I analyze REITs, maybe you analyze English better, you can let me know or let the management of digital corners. Ladies and gentlemen, is that the next slide, that's slide 11. They say that their initial scale currently position them for sustainable growth. You know, wow, substantial growth really. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the REITs stratosphere, you know, when people mention substantial stratospheric you know, it's something that I will be the first to bounce through the door. That's why in this week's video, you notice that I left my door open and I can see I climb up 
to the top floor of my house or even go down to the lower floor. Now, the key thing here, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as you can see from here, is that they, if they are going for a substantial growth, meaning they have to finance this growth, and the balance sheet doesn't actually allow them to expand purely on loan. So where do they turn to? You, the minority shareholders. Now, for sure, they will come to you with a dilutive share placement, be it now, next year or the following year. You may say the share price may recover, but look no further. If the NAV currently is at 82 cents adjusted, 80 cents, you know, but the share price is almost half of its NAV. It's a long way to catch up, you know. And so if they have to do any placements, issuing new shares at below the NAV, they were already done. Doesn't matter whether it's at 47 cents, doesn't matter whether it's at 50 cents, doesn't matter whether it's better as 57 cents. You will be diluted if the REIT, Digital Call, goes on to finance its expansion plan for to justify sustainable or substantial growth you know, at any time between now and the foreseeable future. So something, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be wary and be careful about. So to round up, ladies and gentlemen, as I've mentioned, you know, um, while data center REITs you know, are poised to benefit from AI or the, or the spread of artificial intelligence via ch new applications like chat, GPT, and so on, you notice that data center, especially those with co-location facilities and shell and core facilities will benefit. But let me tell you, I am skeptical the digital core falls into this category, as I've mentioned in my Business Times interview. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, video. Give us a thumbs up and be careful. And always you know, spread the word, essentially, that when it comes to protecting your wealth in real estate investment trusts, do come and hear us more on GCP Global to tell your friends and your loved ones. So stay core to your core values investing needs, meaning that one, if the REIT does not deliver a DPU, don't invest. Two, if they don't deliver on the DPU, they come with all sorts of excuses, particularly some that will actually complicate you, like the meaning of steady in this instance, and the meaning of substantial. So be careful when it comes to this. Once again, enjoy.